American. This man is one of the most storied defensive coaches in football history, architect of the Tampa 2 system that has immersed itself at all levels of the sport over the last 20 years. Highlight of his career came when his vaunted Buccaneers defense won Super Bowl 37 over the Raiders, 48 to 21 back in January 2003. Low point of his career, this interview right now in Burbank, California. <laughs> But he is the best. Assistant head coach at USC, we welcome the great, the unparalleled Monty Kiffin right here in studio on Fox Sports Radio. Thanks for coming in, Coach Monty. What's cracking, Mount? Well, How's everything? Well, what do you say? I can't believe I'm in studio with Petros and Money. Huh? Really? Is we that, can, we can yeah, that exciting? This, oh, I can't even. This is a big deal. I'm <laughs> looking out the window. I mean, it's I, a I, nice facility. I've only lived here like one year and a half or something yeah. like that. And I'm, am I really, is that Universal Studios over there? Hollywood, where am I at? That's okay. NBC. That's right Universal. Woo. Universal yeah. Studios is the other way, but not far from here. So if you want to go after the show and go on the Simpsons ride with us. Yeah, we'll take you over there. Yeah, we can really. I can walk you right in. Enjoy that. Now, you look relaxed, Coach. This is big time, man. Oh, come on. Stop <laughs> it. Super Bowl champion telling us what's big time. Yeah. So, so what does a college football coach do? Now, you've only been a college football coach now the second time around for, what is his second year now. I mean, what do you do in June? There's no player-coach contact allowed until August. Do you just take six weeks off? I mean, explain it to our listeners. Well, no, no. June now, you go through all your new playbooks, and uh, you go back and do all your cut-ups, and what can we do better, this and that, go through your spring cut-ups. Then we have our, our camps. We had a great skills camp last week. We had an O-line, D-line camp. How about this? O-line, D camp, there's 298 guys. 298? We right. have the skills camp. The next, the next day on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, okay? They're supposed to have weekends off at least. No workers camps. We have like about 400. I told about six, six, 700 kids in two days. Now we got the Rising Stars camp coming up. Yeah, the Not Trojans this. in training camp. June 25th on the USC campus. Camp for kids grades third through eight. No, 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 no. Grades three through eight. And more info, go to campkiffin.com. So all kinds of kids at different... At different levels. Good job, yeah. No, you, no. You, you don't get tired of coaching like a like a ten year old kid. It takes well, him seven steps to run five yards. We might get a, a commit out of this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be unprecedented getting <laughs> someone that young. But but, but, but uh, we'll say this: we, let's make sure we don't get a secondary violation. Okay? No, 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 we don't no. want to mention anybody. Like absolutely not. Now, Culture of compliance. With two voracious recruiters on the USC staff, in your son, the head coach Lane Kiffin, and D coordinator Ed Ogeron. What, what is your role in recruiting? How, how much do you get out there and, and really get your feet dirty on the trail? Well, I tell you what, I'm the South Bay area. Coach Kiffin, the head coach, gave me the South Bay area. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah that's it. Well, you got the West I, High I, Warriors. You got Maricosta, yeah, Torrance High. We got, got J.R. Tavai coming in from Maricosta. It was uh, kind of under the radar. Yeah. I, I, I found him. Oh, sure you did. Not too far from where what? you live. <laughs> I was in Maricosta. And I don't know Maricosta... From, from Burbank, all right, and I'm going out recruiting my first spring here, and I'm going to here and there, whatever, and I find out where it's at. So I go in, and, and anyway, make a long story short, we, we commit, or he commits to us, or whatever, we sign him to a contract, offer, whatever. Sure. I shouldn't say the word contract. No, it's no. a le letter of intent. <laughs> letter of intent, there we go. Came from the facts. <laughs> anyway, then uh, my wife comes to find a house to rent, and I definitely rented. I bought in Tennessee. That wasn't a good uh -oh. idea. So I decided to rent. I rent, and I find out. I'm two and a half blocks from Miracle High School in Manhattan, Wyoming. So anyway, yeah, yeah it's, right. it's not up. it's not far. No, Arte but anyway, Artesia. But they, but I go out of state. I basically I concentrate on the Tampa area, Orlando, that type of thing, because I was there for 13 years. So I know a lot of high school coaches, and so it works out pretty good. You know, what you were talking about kids in grades three through eight. You know, down where I live, I've got young children. So there's competing football organizations. Friday Night Lights. And Pop Warner. We got the Huntington Beach Dolphins, and then you got the Friday Night Lights for for kids. I mean, this Friday Night Lights is relatively new. The flag really? and just kind of more offense. Does it matter when they're that young? Is it just more about getting on the field and playing as a team, or is there something to putting on pads and playing that Pop Warner football and tackling? Well, yeah, but I think it's just to get out there and have some fun and don't overdo it and don't overcoach them at that level. I mean, you just kind of get him and introduce him. The fundamentals are important, but I don't think you want to get carried away with too much. Don't try to do what the NFL does on Sunday or. You know, the college is on Saturday. Read option for eight-year-olds? Yeah, no, you don't need to do that. But we have a rising star camp coming up before that now. And that's coming up next Wednesday. And, and that's where you really get a look at yeah, it. That's, that's some of the best in the country. I came out here and watched rising stars camp with, with uh, my son. I came out to see my son and family, whatever, and Pete Carroll. 
And I was there for, a, and guess who was there that day working there? A guy by the name of Keith Rivers. He was a junior. From, from Florida? From Florida. Yes, sir. And that day, they worked out this nap, and they came in and brought him in the Heritage Hall, and I'm just kind of tagging along behind watching this whole thing. And then they went in and went to Coach Carroll, the head coach's offices, couches, whatever. And I follow him in, and there's number 55 of the jersey sitting on the couch. Next thing you know, he commits USC. I'm out there the other day, walking down through the campus or whatever. Here comes Keith Rivers, walking up to Harry's Hall. And he talked, and he came over and talked to our 101 class yesterday, the, the women's camp. It was off, 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 off. Awesome dude. Yeah, you had a women's camp. Yeah, they had a football 101 with Layla Kiffin, your beautiful daughter-in-law. And this used to happen with Larry Smith's wife. She was uh, she was big into teaching women about football. And she used to do this, but you guys brought it back, and apparently it was a big to-do. It was. It was really it was really something. I had no idea it was going to be like that. We had one in Tennessee, but this thing this might have even been better. But there were 200 women showed up. They had a blast. I tell you what, like older ladies or young ladies? No, oh, there's all, all different ages. But but Layla, the whole staff was there. The wives were there, and they had a, a great. Uh, each coach got up and talked. They had talked about recruiting this and that. We had a lot of fun. Then we, they had a nice lunch. They went over, and guess what? We go in the locker room. Okay, they're in the locker room. This gets join out. And so Ed's. They're all. We got all these seats here now. There's like ton of women in the locker room. And a coliseum. Yeah, in the coliseum. They're getting ready, they're trying to treat it like, you know, it's 20 minutes before kickoff, whatever. So they're all sitting there. And in, in, in a normal situation, you know, the, the players are all there and they're, they're talking this and that. And they get real quiet when the coach comes out. So Coach John says, okay, get ready. Won't be long before kickoff. The head coach is going to come out and talk to you before you hit the field. Lane walks out. They start clapping and cheering. <laughs> <laughs> so when comes out, we walk down shoulder to shoulder right down the tunnel. The, we had like five, six uh, band members there playing, fight on, whatever. They take the field. It was awesome. Then we go, they guess, guess what? They set up a seven on seven. We, we, got, we got all these ladies playing linebackers, <laughs> defensive backs. Unbelievable. No seven on seven. Here's the offense. And, and Lane Kiffin, head coach, is calling the plays. We go down the field, the red zone, okay? They're down. Now, this is seven on seven. This is typical of our head coach, okay? It's seven on seven. It's supposed to be passing, right? Uh, he runs a handoff to the lady in the uh, table. Oh, that's not She cool. scores. <laughs> <laughs> she scores, gets up, and spikes the ball. Oh, hey, I scored on I scored something. on a draw in a seven on seven tournament in high school, and and everybody was like, "Oh, that's BS." I said, "No, okay." Yeah, it's like button <laughs> in a softball game or something around in the bases. Monty Kiffin is in studio with us.